let's get started with the XML. So XML, as you already heard about, this stands for Extensible Markup Language. If you, if you look at most of my slides, I collected from online, to be specific, mostly from w3schools.com and a couple of other portals. So these slides will give you some quick brief uh, about how to get started with these basics. Now, I recommend you to uh, even go through online for additional details. If you do not understand anything, put them in a notepad so that we'll uh, discuss uh, as for we move further. <coughs> So this stands for extensible markup language. Uh, it's like a language must, uh, like your HTML. An XML was designed to carry the data, not to display the data. An XML tags are not predefined. You must define your own tags. Okay. So any XML file will start with this first statement. And uh, it, it basically consists of some, uh, some elements. Uh, or we use the terminology like tags. And these are not predefined. So the author of this XML document has to uh, talk about what are these elements meant for what kind of data uh, these elements can take okay so that has to be specified by the author of this particular xml document to be specific in an xst that probably we'll be talking about in the coming slides now a few differences between the xml and html now html the basic intention is to design the data on a web page but whereas xml uh, was designed to carry the data uh, and not to display the data on, a, on your page. So that's what he's saying. So XML is not a replacement for your HTML. No, these two are designed to two different goals. So XML basically was designed to transport and store the data with the focus of what the data is all about. Whereas HTML was designed to display the data with the focus of how that data should look like. And XML is a software ind uh, hardware independent tool for carrying the information. So that's the reason uh, any utility can able to understand and execute the data in an XML. And XML uh, tags, uh, whatever you can say, are not predefined, as we already spoke about. So the author will be talking about what are these elements meant for what kind of data these elements can capture. Whereas if you look at in HTML, the elements are kind of predefined. XML will follow something like a uh, tree structure. Now what does that mean? Uh, all the elements will start with the root element. Root element can consist of some child elements. Childs again can consist of some subchildrens, and uh, all the XML elements must have a closing tag. And the XML elements are kind of case sensitive, and these are uh, properly nested. Now, what does that mean? Uh, I should be closing the subchildren before I would be closing the child element. And uh, XML documents must have a root element, and only one root element is allowed. And you can also define the attributes, and the value of the attribute should be in quotes. Either it could be the double quotes or single quotes. And uh, let's take uh, if the value of your XML element will contain these kind of special symbols. Now you cannot provide them directly. You have to replace them with these characters. Now less than, greater than goes into uh, these special characters. And if you wanted to provide a comment in an XML, this is how you need to provide. And he's also talking about if you kind of giving some white spaces between the data. So typically in HTML that gets trimmed into one single white space irrespective of uh, how many spaces that we provide. But that doesn't happen in XML. Uh, in XML it takes as is. Now let's talk about an element. Now XML element is everything uh, from element start tag to elements end tag. Now in between it can contain some other elements. Uh, some text, uh, direct value, attributes, and of all the flavors. Now, if you look at here, a uh, bookstore is an element. It started here and ended here. And bookstore has a child called book, which has a attribute, and book has a child called title. Now, this entire bookstore is an element for us. Book is also an element for us, which has an attribute, and book becomes a children. And title is also an element, which becomes a subchildren, which directly has the value. So all of these uh, kind of elements and if you want to define uh, an empty element so this is how you need to provide you can simply close the tag this way or you can open and close the tag okay now there are some naming rules uh, when you're giving the names for your XML elements so typically uh, whatever the naming rules that you'll provide uh, for your variables whatever the language that you're using I mean the utility that you're using like C Java even uh, SQL I mean PL SQL. So you'd be providing some typical namings uh, for your variables. Now, all those naming rules will also be applicable even for your XML elements. Okay. Now, for example, uh, names can contain letters, numbers, other characters. Names cannot start with a number. 
the punctuation character and cannot start with these special characters and shouldn't even contain spaces. Now XML elements are extensible. Now what does that mean? Now for now we have these couple of elements. In future we are allowed to extend or include additional elements in our message. That's why we call XML is an extensible. Okay. Now you are also allowed to provide some attributes. For example, file is an element. This is the value of the element and the type of file, uh, which is type is an attribute, and this is the value of your attribute. Now attributes are used to provide the additional information on your element. So that's the primary reason we try to use attribute. And as we discussed, the value of the attribute uh, should be uh, either in double quotes or single quotes. Now the same thing, what happens if the value itself uh, would like to have a uh, this kind of uh, double quotes or special characters. You have to replace with these. Now elements versus attributes. Now in the version one, uh, he created an element called person uh, with an attribute. And the same information he tried replacing in another version 2. Where in this case he used as an element. Now, <clears throat> so for the uh, uh, comparison, so when to when we should use the elements and when should we use attributes. Now, uh, in simple terms, try to avoid using attributes as much as possible. So the reason is very simple. If it is an attribute, we cannot extend that further. I cannot add additional information. But when it is an element, I can add additional information. I can create some subchildrens. Uh, I can create attributes. So this element can uh, extend it further. Okay. So that's the primary reason. Uh, do not use attributes unless that is mandate. Now he's giving one more example. He has some set of information represented entirely in an uh, elements. The same thing he also represented into one element and everything else as an attributes. No, this is not the recommended approach. He would like to use this approach. For the simple reason, let's take he has a day. <clears throat> now I wanted to even include what is a day, whether it's a Sunday, Monday, what kind of week it is. You cannot mention that in an uh, attributes because you cannot extend that. But in this uh, pattern, we have a privilege to extend that. And namespace, <clears throat> so this guy is trying to make us understand uh, he has a table information. Uh, one is HTML table, this one, and another one is some piece of furniture, this one. Now, if you notice here, the element the name is same in both the uh, informations, like table. Now, he would like to consolidate these two into another XML document. Now, that's why he's facing something like name conflict. Now, table meant for whether it is either the HTML or a piece of furniture. So, that's where he's talking about. We would like to provide a namespace for an element so that that gets uniquely identified. Now typically if I give you an example, let's take I have a Java package. Uh, for example, <coughs> com oracle apps. Auto manage and purchase order service types. I have a class okay. now the same thing has been represented in a different package. I'll take out this. Now I have a class called purchase order. <coughs> Name, even the content, everything is same but it resides in two different packages. When these classes are getting loaded by the JVM, JVM will uniquely identify these classes even though uh, even the content name everything is same. Because JVM will try to load your class with your package. So that's why it will uniquely identify. On a similar note, even for the XML elements, even for the XML elements you can start giving one namespace. So that's how your elements uniquely gets identified even though the element names are same. Now if you look here, so for your elements he would like to provide one namespace and he is giving something like a prefix now using this prefix we are allowed to access all the elements of those elements okay now here he is providing something like furniture and he is giving a prefix called f so f colon table is different than h colon table here okay but if you notice here whenever he is trying to create uh, a new piece of furniture 
it's trying to initiate a namespace but it doesn't look uh, a cleaner approach for me so for that purpose he defined all the namespaces that he would like to use at a parent element level and at child runs uh, at the current element level he's trying to access those elements with a prefix now it looks more cleaner approach for me okay because i don't need to re repeat the namespace every time when i'm creating a new, new piece of furniture or a new HTML table information okay but uh, there is one more issue here there is an element called width uh, which is taking a numeric value but in another version he is taking the value uh, in terms of uh, characters now how do I ensure this is an element should take only a number not a character now that's where we introduce something like a validator okay now there are two validators available one is DTD document type definition and this very old way to uh, validate your XML data and another one is XSD uh, which stands for XML schema definition okay and uh, we would be going to use a, uh, XSD uh, in our uh, projects uh, uh, for validating your XML data so XSD is more powerful on DTD due to these following reasons now uh, for example XML schemas are written in XML uh, XML schema is nothing but the XSD. These are written in XML, so you'll get all the features of your XML. And these are extensible for the additions. So this also supports the data type. So that's where I can mention the element width is uh, an integer. So it will take only a number of values. And it also supports the namespaces. Now for example, this is how you can define uh, an XSD, uh, the root element name. So I'll talk about what is a complex type, when should we use and sequences and, uh, these elements probably in the coming slides in XST and you can define the uh, child elements this way element its name and it, its type so this is a very simple uh, example of uh, creating an XST <laughs>